I think that as explainers of science to the general world, we have a political obligation to think very carefully about how we will be misunderstood if we're misunderstood. And I think that in this area, the, pro the risks of misunderstanding are huge. You've just given a very clear articulation of the view that there's no real design because no process in nature is, is a proper designer. This is a view that, that Richard also shares, and he even came up with a term, designoid, meaning apparently designed. I'm going to tell you why I oppose that, why I think this is a mistake. I'm going to tell mainly an anecdote. There I was in a bar, and I heard these uh, guys talking about the marvels of a cell, inside a cell. They were, they'd just seen a, a video or heard a lecture or something about the intricacies of what goes on inside a single cell. And one of them looked at the other and said, boy, you see all of those amazing machines and you just realize, how can evolution possibly be true? <laughs> and my jaw dropped because these were not rednecks, these were Harvard medical students. And what I realized then, and I have other examples of this, is that the, the idea is out there in the world that evolutionary biologists, that it is very much in their interest to downplay the marvelousness of nature. And to say, no, 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 there's no design in nature, not really. And so any example of brilliant design in nature is an embarrassment to science. I think that's exactly wrong. I think that we should recognize what evolution accomplishes and development is stupendously clever. Now, that means that means that the process, the non-supernatural, natural process, is properly called a design process. Because we can actually compare real design, which is what we see in the in the biosphere, with pseudo-design. My favorite example of pseudo-design is when a cartoonist like Sidney Harris has a cartoon of science and he's got a blackboard and it's all covered with fantastic uh, 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 formulae. And we're all supposed to understand that that's some deep kind of physics or something. And it's just gibberish. That's designoid. It's apparent design. The design in nature is not only real design, it is typically better than what any human engineers can come up with. Yeah. The, the optimization of energy use and so forth is typically uh, far exceeds what, what the paradigmatic designers can come up with. So Dan's point is all based upon the idea that natural design is just as good as human design, and maybe it is, but that's not the only consideration. There's also the provenance of the two, of the two designs. Um, Alex was suggesting that actually fundamentally even human design is a kind of natural selection. But um, natural design has no foresight. Human design can look ahead and say, uh, if we go on polluting the atmosphere or get the global warming, in a century's time, there's going to be a disaster not just for, for me personally, but for the whole of humanity, for the whole of the ecosystem, that's looking ahead of time. And um, nature doesn't do that. Nature optimizes in the short term for the individual actor that's, that's doing it. Now, that's a very, very important difference. If you, if you assumed that if you used the same word design for biological design and for human design, then you would get the wrong answer when faced with conundrums about natural design which people do every day in biology. There are people who think that because adaptation is a good thing, therefore whatever is going to be a good thing in the human sense will evolve, and it won't. Um, species may drive themselves extinct by going hell for leather like the gathering swine um, over, over the cliff of short-term adaptation. Um, and so I think that a, it doesn't have to be the word dis designoid, but but something that expresses both the fact that biological design is very, very good, though, by the way, not perfect, uh, is very, very good, and expresses the fact that it doesn't come about by the same process. And in particular, you get the wrong answer if you're a biologist who assumes something like, well, actually, it's teleology, but...